I'm always in traffic with the lane expert. You know this type of person? Constantly re-evaluating their lane choice. Never quite sure, is this the best lane for me, for my life? It always a little bit ahead of you. Can I get in over there? Can I get ahead of you? Can I get in there? Yeah, come on over here, pal. We're zooming over here. This is the secret lane. Nobody knows about it. The ultimate, I think the ultimate psychological test of traffic is the total dead stop. Not even rolling. And you look out the window, you can see gum clearly. But we know that in the future, traffic will get even worse than that. I mean, what will happen? Will it start moving backwards, I wonder? I mean, is that possible that someday we'll be going, boy, this is some really bad traffic now, boy. This is really bad. I'm going to try and get off and get back on going the other way. Hello, Newman. I hate Keith Hernandez. Hate him! I despise him. Why? <laughs> why? Well, I'll tell you why. Let me tell the story. Uh, no, you can't tell it. Uh, you always tell it. <sighs> Fine, you tell it. Yeah, j j j j just, just, just tell it. <sighs> Fine, whatever. Okay. June 14th, 1987. Mets. Phillies. We were all having a beautiful afternoon until a crucial Hernandez error cost the Mets the game. Our day was ruined. Uh, you, you know there were a lot of people there. Um, most of them were hanging out by the players' parking lot. Uh, we were heading down the ramp. Newman was in front of me. When Hernandez was heading towards us, as he passed us, Newman turned and shouted, Nice game, pretty boy! Uh, Hernandez just continued past us and went up the ramp. Then, a second later, something had happened that changed us in a deep and profound way that day forward. Well, what was it? He spit on us, and I shouted out, I'm hit! Then, the spit ricocheted off of him, and it hit me. A story. Unfortunately, the immutable laws of physics contradict the entire premise of your account. Allow me to demonstrate for Mr. Bennis, as I've heard this story a number of times. Newman, Kramer, if you'll indulge me. So you say you were walking down the ramp when, um, when Hernandez passes you. Then you say you were struck in the right temple. The spit then bounced off the temple and landed between Newman's third and fourth rib. The spit comes off of the rib, hits Newman in the right wrist, causing him to drop his baseball cap. The spit then splashes off the wrist, pauses in midair, mind you, takes a left turn, and lands on Newman's left thigh. That is one magic loogie. Well. That's the way it happened. Tell me, what happened to your head when it got hit? Well, my head went back and to the left. Again. Back and to the left. <laughs> back and to the left. Back and to the left. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying that the spit could not have come from behind, as you claim. That there has to have been a second spitter behind the bushes on the gravelly road. If the spit had come from behind, this would have caused her head to pitch forward. So you're saying that the spit came from the front and to the right? But that is not what they would have you believe. I'm leaving. Jerry's a nut. Wait, wait. The sad thing is, we may never know the real truth. about the life of clothes. What is the life of clothes, really? What does it come down to? They're either on you or home, hoping to get picked tomorrow. <laughs> and their whole existence is just a steady decline, isn't it? I mean, when they first come in the house, they're new. They got price tags. I mean, they're wrapped in a little tissue paper. They're the big stars. But then after a while, they start to fall out of the rotation. They're in the back of the closet. They're as warm. It's so tragic. 